So once we set up our bombs and our routings, what we can then do is we can then start working with work orders. And as, and as I said before, work order could be could actually be created as part of an MRP process. So we've already seen through the suggested orders how we can have work order suggestions. And those work order suggestions could actually be firm orders. They don't have to be suggestions. But you can also create work orders manually. Uh, let me just click on the button here and we'll go back to the work order we were looking at before. So here, for example, we're looking at the uh, work order for our digital printer product. And here in the header, header screen, we're seeing that, we're, that we've got our finished product code in here. We're seeing that we're actually, we're actually creating a work order here for five units. And we're using a particular BOM alternate in order, to, in order to see that information. If I scroll a bit further down, we can see that we can either schedule our work order backwards or forwards from, from, from certain dates. And then going further down again, we can see the individual components. And you can see here that we've got our individual components listed here. And we can see that all of our, all of our BOM components have been multiplied by five because we're creating five units, apart from the power supply, which still remains as a single, as a single unit. And that's because we defined it as a fixed, as a, as a fixed quantity within our bomb. Okay, first thing we probably need to do now in order to progress this work order is actually to allocate some stock to it. So we've got an allocation button at the top of the screen, which allows us to perform that function, or we can do it manually line by line. You'll see here we've got a couple of options here for uh, allocation. One is something called global allocation and one is called detailed. Global allocation is what you might want to perhaps refer to as a soft allocation, where we're simply re um, reserving a quantity of stock, but maybe not specifically detailing uh, the actual um, stock items. So in a sort of detailed sense, we may be, may be allocating on a first in, first out basis, or first expired, first out, whatever your requirements need to be. And there are a number of different options available to you within X3 to decide what your detailed allocation um, method should be on a product by product basis. So for, so for some products, for example, bulk materials, perhaps you may just perhaps work on a first in, first out basis, but you may have some specific products where you need to be very specific and say, right, I need, I need, to, I need to allocate the oldest lot first. So what I'm going to do now is I've got 14 components in my bomb. I'm going to click on the allocate button. And you can see now that we've got uh, uh, sort of 14 global allocations here. Actually, what I'll do is let me just change that back to detailed now. And if I now allocate again, that will convert that now into 14 detailed allocations. If I return back to my work order and go back down to my components library, you can see here that we've got the, our numbers allocated here now and we have no shortages. So with that, I'd just like to now really close the session and say thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I hope you found it useful. And if you do need to get in touch, please use any of the details on the screen here or you can email me directly. Um, it, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for joining and have a great rest of your day.